Hey everyone, I'm Natalie Bensavanga. Welcome to a very special bonus five minutes with. I am so excited to chat with two wonderful women from the Basic Health International Organization based here in Bakery Square. I'm chatting with Dr. Miriam Kramer. She is the founder and the president of BHI and Kate Colligan, who handles their development and communications. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you both here with me. So for people that may not know, Dr. Kramer, can you explain a little bit about how BHI began and what is it? What's its focus? Sure. So BHI is an organization that is working towards elimination of cervical cancer. Um, and it started uh, from an experience I had as a medical student um, over 20 years ago. I worked in a rural area um, as a rotation, as a fourth year medical student. Yeah. And uh, I worked in a small village with no electricity, no running water, um, and worked with a healthcare promoter who was the only health provider in that community. And we went one day to visit a young woman with children um, who was dying of cervical cancer. Mm. And eventually she bled to death from this preventable disease. And it inspired me to try to spend my life career really trying to make sure that no one dies of a preventable disease. That's incredible. So you are an OBGYN and now your focus is really on BHI and the prevention of cervical cancer. Can you explain a little bit about how the impact is here in the United States with people getting cervical cancer as it is across the rest of the world? Yeah, of course. So cervical cancer is a disease that affects women who don't have access mm -hmm. and who are poor. Um, so 90% of cervical cancer occurs in low and middle income countries. Mm -hmm. However, um, cervical cancer affects our poorest women our um, people of color, minority women. Um, so um, it hits right here at home as well. And can we talk a little bit about during COVID, how did your organization address the needs of our communities during the pandemic? And how did you have to pivot during that time? Yeah, I mean, I think we all had to pivot. It was a really complicated time. Mm -hmm. um, so we have been working really hard with um, with engineers that um, create tools that are usable in low resource areas. Um, and so um, I will say we continued um, to um, work with those engineers. And one of our pivots was that we helped an engineer develop COVID testing. Um, and the basis of that COVID testing can be used for testing for HPV, which causes cervical cancer. So we were able to build some infrastructure mm -hmm. that will be able to be used later. So that is, that's really exciting. I always find that fascinating out of something terrible, something amazing can blossom. And when we're talking about HPV, I think a lot of times we think that this is an issue that people with um, cervixes or with uteruses or the female reproductive system deal with, but men can also get HPV and it can affect their health as well. Can you sort of link in why we should all care about this as all yeah. people? So certainly, I, you know, I think there's a lot of reasons why we should all care. Mm -hmm. um, for the cervix part, everybody has, you know, somebody they love mm -hmm. with the cervix who okay. could be susceptible. Um, but HPV affects both men and women. Mm. Um, men can get genital warts, men can get oral cancer mm. or rectal cancer. So HPV um, causes cancer in humans. So when we're talking about ways to prevent this disease, this cancer, um, what can people do? Yeah. I mean, the, the very... Um, the great thing is that it's preventable and we have, you know, we know what causes it, which mm -hmm. is rare in medicine in general. We know the mm -hmm. virus that causes it. Um, although I want to make sure that everybody knows that not everybody with HPV will wind up with cancer. Right. So sometimes it's cleared and we don't know quite who will mm -hmm. go on to lead it, but you can prevent getting HPV by getting vaccinated. The vaccine is indicated for both, um, men and women. Um, so girls and boys can get vaccinated um, as young as age nine. Wow. Um, so, uh, 
and vaccination is wonderful for, for, for preventing cancer. Um, and um, for um, women, um, making sure that um, getting screened uh, and treated for cervical precancer is another uh, way to prevent uh, problems. So you're really trying to put yourself out of a job here is what I'm hearing. Yeah, that would be <laughs> ideal. I would love that. That would be ideal, right? So let's yeah. pivot a little bit. So in order to help put Dr. Kramer out of a job, we're trying to get as much awareness built around this cause as possible. So Kate, can you talk a little bit about what's going on this Father's Day and how men and fathers in particular can help support their daughters? Yes, yes, and thank you for uh, thanks for giving us this this uh, moment to to say something about it. We we decided that you know Father's Day could be used in so many different ways, but we see a real correlation between you know girls' health, women's health, and men. Mm -hmm. And so, how can we involve men more mm -hmm. um, in in a topic that they may not usually stand up for, but they're really involved. They now, as Miriam mentioned they know and care about somebody with a cervix somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and probably they were born from that cervix. <laughs> <laughs> we should so we've started something called um, Dads for Daughters. So mm -hmm. if you look up hashtag Dads for Daughters mm -hmm. uh, and geared towards let's, let's get some men in our, our community involved mm -hmm. uh, in standing up for women's health. And what we've made it very simple. We're just asking you to sign up at our website there at www.basichealth.org. There's a pop-up, you can make a donation and we look forward to following up with you. We're planning to do more Dads for Daughters events in the future, but okay. this one is one special because this is our lead event and our kickoff mm. is Father's Day. So we would like each father who's able to give a donation or to spread the word to text or email or social media or whatever is best for you for, for other dads because it's dads for daughters. So um, you don't have to be a dad. You could be a daughter doing this for your dad. Mm -hmm. You could be uh, anyone who cares about, about this and wants to amplify it on the specific day of Father's Day. I think that's so wonderful. And as we wrap up this five minutes with um, Dr. Kramer, where do you see the trajectory of Basic Health International going as we move forward post COVID? What is your dream for the organization? Yeah, my dream is that we continue to uh, eliminate cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, part of the pandemic is that some of our um, preventive health systems have really slowed or come to a halt. So I want to make sure that we do catch ups on screenings and vaccinations. Um, and I want to grow our model like this is amazing because it's a disease that really can be prevented. Um, and, you know, I will spend the rest of my career and hopefully not. So help put me out of business, um, <laughs> working to eliminate cervical cancer. I think it's a wonderful mission and an important cause. I wish you the best with the organization. Thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to help spread the word. And, uh, thank you both for spending just a little bit more than five minutes with me. Thanks thank for you. having us. Thank you.